This is a work of political and social commentary. The content of this video is not meant for children under the age of 13. Parental discretion is advised. Now, I don't know about you, but a lot of us seem to be sitting at home right now, either working by remote or waiting to hear back from our companies to find out when the layoffs will be over. Everywhere we look these days, country after country is effectively closed for business. Only essential businesses are operating. Social distancing is being strictly enforced. Public gatherings are forbidden. Even going outside for non-essential activities is banned in many places. According to Fortune magazine, major investment banks are now estimating the total amount of lost GDP at 30% or more for 2020. In 2019, the GDP in America was $21.44 trillion. 2020 is expected to come in at around $15 trillion, a loss of roughly $6.5 trillion of GDP. The longer the country remains closed for business, the more the economy is projected to tank. Reopening businesses all over the country is a serious matter. So is controlling the pandemic. Deciding when to pull the trigger and how has to be one of the government's top priorities. You can guess what comes next, so I'll just light the match. Unemployment claims in the United States have jumped significantly since mid-March. Over 16.8 million Americans have filed for unemployment since March 14th. Most of those new claims are for those temporarily displaced from their jobs due to closures. But the longer the country remains closed for business, the more of those jobs will switch from a temporary layoff to a permanent job loss. Closed businesses still have operating costs like rent, utilities, and inventory. Some businesses are doing their best to keep their workers on the payroll using the new government relief programs, but no business can afford to continue to operate in a shutdown status forever. The cash reserves will run out, and eventually the business closure will become permanent. Every day that we fight the COVID outbreak, more businesses are transitioning from planning to reopen to planning to file bankruptcy. As the health crisis continues, the economic crisis grows. Yet we cannot move too quickly to reopen businesses, lest the outbreak numbers explode and more people die. We need a plan, and that means Trump needs to get together a task force of smart people to advise him. Strangely enough, Trump announced his economic task force selections. He called it the Reopening the Country Council, and there are about 200 names on the list. He's broken down the council into working groups by industry. Some of the names are old friends like Vince McMahon, and some are critics like Mark Cuban. I'll list them by industry and name the company they represent.
Whew! That's a lot of names and a lot of organizations. These names, both corporation and individual, represent some of the most successful business and community leaders in the United States. They also represent the gamut of political views, from people who donated to Trump like Sheldon Adelson, to the man who runs one of the biggest anti-Trump newspapers in the world, Jeff Bezos. Larry Lindsay said that China believes Trump is a, quote, 10 out of 10 narcissist, unquote. Jamie Dimon of J.P. Morgan Chase is a lifelong Democrat who said in 2018 that he thinks he can beat Trump in a presidential election. Many of the people named have publicly criticized the president. Some of them absolutely can't stand him. What they all have in common is that they are some of the brightest and best economic minds in the world. That's why they were named to the council. Many, if not most, of them have absolutely no interest in Donald J. Trump, but they have a vested interest in America. Every last one of them does. He didn't ignore health care in favor of business either. There are 27 people on the council who made their careers in health care, including former FDA Commissioner Scott Gottlieb. This council will serve to advise the president on how to reopen the country and how much longer their industries can survive the shutdown. They will not overrule the guidance provided by the president's current advisors on the health crisis, but they will provide specific information and opinions on their industries. That information will prove critical to the president as he proposes new packages to help the economy weather the crisis and new policies to get the country back to business. Now, MSNBC is reporting that at least one of the names on the list wasn't asked before the announcement. Rachel Maddow, or at least one of her writers, is convinced that this council is an unholy mess which merely highlights the president's incompetence. Then again, I suspect that Rachel Maddow thinks that Trump can't breathe competently, seeing as she has been on a multi-year quest to bring the Trump presidency down. While she might publicly decry the collapse of the economy despite Trump's best efforts to maintain it, I would not be surprised in the least if she hears an invisible cash register while many businesses in the country are facing permanent closure. Like it or not, Trump is the leader of America's efforts to fight through the pandemic and get our nation back to work. We should all be wishing him the best of success right now, because a 30% decrease in GDP is an economic depression, folks. There may not be many people left alive who remember the Great Depression, but there are plenty of histories of the period, and I'm starting to see some real similarities between what happened then and what's happening now. Milk and egg farmers are now destroying their produce because there isn't enough demand for it with the restaurant industry shut down. The price of gasoline continues to fall despite the announced end of the oil production dispute between Saudi Arabia and Russia, which flooded the market. There's still a series of as-of-yet unresolved trade disputes in the world which were already slowing down economic growth and which will hamper any recovery, in this country and in many others and nothing can be done until the outbreak is fully contained except monitor the situation and make plans. But it's a start. 